Good morning, Victory Life Church and everybody else that's tuning in today. We've got another exciting time in the Word this morning. Again, we're going to touch the most, most important topic on the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. It's so important that you understand that. I cannot over <laughs> underemphasize it because it's so important and I, my heart just breaks for Christians who just never get involved with the Word of God to the point that they are actually seeing a, a uh, transfiguration uh, uh, of, uh, of all their different uh, things in their life, that their lives are, to, uh, as the Bible says, to be an overcomer, to overcome this world, to overcome every situation, be, be in a constant passion of triumph. It's never going to happen unless the eyes of our understanding be enlightened. They need to be enlightened. I need to be enlightened. The Apostle Paul prayed in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17, that the eyes of their heart be enlightened. It says, um, by having the eyes of their heart being flooded with light, that they may know the hope, know the hope, understand the hope of their calling. Everybody's called, and most people don't even understand that. And so we had you over to into, uh, Matthew chapter 16 also, where we showed you how um, Peter... And the disciples were there, and, and of course Peter um, was always the one that was a little bit rambunctious. And uh, anyway, Jesus asked him the one day, he says, who do men say that we are? And he says, um, everybody's um, you know, kind of saying, well, some say this, some say that. And then Peter pipes out, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, boy, um, that information came down from heaven, and nobody gave you that but the Father from heaven. And then he says that the, that the whole church, Peter, you're a big rock, but even on a bigger rock, the rock of uh, revelation knowledge, I'm going to build my church. And so, you know, I've gone through what they call uh, the word of faith. They call it the word of faith movement, but I call it, it's the lifestyle of faith. And we had a wonderful teacher and brother, Kenneth E. Hagan, who brought us the word of faith and it has changed our life. We became confident that the Word works, confident that God has a good plan for us, confident that He has redeemed us and has provided for us on this earth. And so we didn't, I didn't know that before. I, was, I grew up in church, and it was, uh, there was just information there that was not, <clears throat> not setting people free, let's put it that way. And uh, so uh, we finally, finally, finally found the Word of Faith which we preach today. And that's exactly what Jesus is saying here to Matt, uh, in Matthew chapter 16. He's saying it to Peter, Peter, that God reveals something to you and the kingdom is going to be built not on new something, information outside of the word. It's going to be built on revelation knowledge and a spirit and the word agree. Everything has been already written. Everything's been written. We're not like certain cults that add to the Word of God or have a second book uh, and, and, uh, or base their life on a vision or a dream or something like that. It's based on the Word of God being revealed. So don't let anybody tell you we're adding to the Word of God by extracting from the Word of God information. That's what we're doing. And um, I want to lead you, first of all, to a few scriptures. We might come back to Matthew chapter 16, but in John, chap John chapter 12... Um, it's very clear. Uh, oops, let's go this way. John chapter 12, it says in verse 47, 46, I have come a light into the world so that whosoever believes on me, who cleaves and who trusts in and relies on me, may uh, not continue to live in darkness. And when you live in darkness, we know that's where the enemy lurks. That's where all the trouble is. Um, but if you, he says, I come to be the light of the world. We, that aligns itself with John chapter 1, where the word John the Baptist said, there was the light. There he is. He's Jesus. And uh, in fact, the word gaze in John chapter 1 speaks of this here. It speaks of you um, basically taking Jesus like a sponge and extracting everything that you need to extract from him. Everything. That need is necessary for life and godliness. In First Peter, it talks about that. In chapter 2, where it talks about that these promises, what is promises? All they are is God letting you know what is His will for your life. And so they are wonderful. They are to be upheld in our hearts and minds, to be understood, to be meditated on, and to be extracted from the Word of God. And so Jesus says that if we 
um, are going to get the information that we need. We need to extract it from the Word of God. And when Jesus is that extraction, and we know that the Word was in the beginning, and the, in the beginning, the Word was God, and He came to us. Well, in Matthew chapter 13, uh, it says, we're going to start, this is very, very exciting, I love I love this because the Bible is very clear that this is the most important parable. It's the parable of the four different soils. And um, you know what happens here. The four different soils, three of them could not produce because there's something always clouding, clouding the sight, clouding the information that Jesus wanted to give them. And it says very clearly, we'll, we'll pick it up here after after the part of this where it talks about the four different kinds of soil we might get back to that today too but we know that jesus was teaching teaching he came teaching preaching and healing and he's got a great crowd gathered about him and he got into a boat and remained sitting there while all the throngs stood at the shore and so what's that all about well again he was providing for them he was healing the masses but here again is the most important thing that you can grab a hold of after making Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. It is get into the Word of God and get wisdom, get understanding of the Word of God. I cannot but emphasize that. Get wisdom, get understanding. Don't think you're getting away with, you know, hey, we're just going to skip out of church today because it's so, you know, wait a minute. What are you skipping? You're skipping a lifeline that could help your family, help your kids. Might be that icing on the cake to bring revelation or understanding in and to the Word of God. And so it's so important. On Sunday, again, I shared a testimony from a guy by the name of Kevin. What a great testimony. I'll just give you one little tidbit. Um, the Lord uh, extracted him out of, he was sitting in a dentist chair, and the Lord took him out and spoke to him and showed him clearly, Kevin, your life is going zigzag, zigzag, zigzag. He says, and again, the Lord wants this here. The Lord wants you to have steps of victory, always victory, always triumph, always overcoming. And his life was going in a zigzag. And, and he says, Kevin, you are uh, supposed to be prophesying over your own life. Well, how do you do that? Well, you have to find out information that concerns you in the Word of God. And then use your mouth to speak it. And so had God not done that for Kevin and sent him back to tell us, that is, ex, that is revelation knowledge. Now, that's not above the word. That's extracting from the word the principle of the tongue, which is a mighty force, James chapter 3, and tons of other scriptures in the word of God that clearly talk about that. But that revelation knowledge, you can't leave that on a shelf. You must have that in operation. So Jesus says this here, after telling them in Matthew chapter 13 about the four different kinds of soil, only one produced. Out of four Christians, only one is producing. Now, I don't like that ratio. I don't want that in my family. I don't want that in my church. I don't want that amongst my friends, where three out of four of them don't get it. But here's the beauty of it. You can all be the good soil. But it's telling you three out of four different types of soil did not get it. And it's like the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, the lusts of other things, snuck in and choked the word or choked out the light, choked out the truth. And uh, so be careful to not. And then it also talks about the soil being sown on, on shallow ground when it, when it gets got really hot that day, as it is in Kelowna right now, record breaking temperatures. Guess what? We see that on my lawn. We see that uh, where there is not deep soil, we see the lawn is dying. And uh, we're doing our best to keep up with things around the house, but it is dying. But that will happen to every believer who gets into the work. Oh, that's great. That's a great church service. And then a few minutes later, they're like, uh, what did he talk about? I can't remember. Or they don't go home and meditate on some of the scriptures or keep them first place in their life. And so what happens, as soon as the heat starts rising, it could be from family members, it might be the boss of your fire, whatever, the cares of this world, or the, or the shallow ground in this case would cause you not to be um, victorious as the soil that was black and it was rich 
and it was a good, good soil. It had no weeds in it, which is the things of the world. It had no shallowness to it, which is, you know, that flippant, excited, and then you kind of get away from it. That good soil, that produces, that's what we want to be. But there's more to it yet than that. All right, so he says this here. And having ears to hear, grab your ears, let him be listening and consider and perceive and comprehend by hearing. So that's good. That's what Jesus did. He pushed himself off from the shore so that all those people, they could, could you imagine the crowd? I guarantee there was some that said, why is Jesus out there in the boat? Why is he not over here? Why, why didn't he touch me with a healing touch? Why didn't he do this and that? And the whole time Jesus wants to, as much as he was into laying hands on the sick, what he wanted to do is teach them so the sick could actually have that healing power within them, you know, and, and or the information that is necessary for life and godliness. It's so important to get the word. So having ears to hear, um, and watch, watch this, I've got to read this again. He who has ears to hear, after the four different kinds of soils were mentioned, let him, so that's you, that's me, be listening, so that's what we do in church, and considering, that's what we do on our way home, and perceiving, that's what we do when we leave the restaurant, and comprehend, that's what we do all afternoon after good church service, comprehend and uh, uh, to, uh, by hearing. So that's so important, you know, and I'll tell you what, I do meditating sometimes on how to make my engine go faster. And I'll tell you what, I look on Facebook and somebody posts something like, how to get more power out of a 318. I'm telling you, I'm going through every single comment. I want to hear from people that are much smarter than I um, in as far as building engines and that. And I'll tell you, I take every trick in the book that I can to make that work. Well, let's bring it over to the spirit realm. It's so important that we listen with our ears then the disciples came to him and said, Why do you speak to them in parables? Well, that goes back to the John 12 scripture that he says those that received Jesus to them was given that power, you know, to have the light and come out of the darkness. It wasn't given to everybody. It, and again, everybody can come to Jesus and have that life extracting power, living or life, life, yeah, life giving power, that light in their spirit, man, and get that darkness out of their spirit, man. Everybody can have that. It is not for an elite group. Like I said, one out of four souls produces. But nowhere in the Bible does it say you have to be one of the uh, other three souls that didn't produce. All he's telling is get your ears on, your catching mitts on. Then, then the disciples asked, why are you speaking in parable? And Jesus would answer, it's for you to know the keys of the kingdom. For every believer, everybody's welcome. Every one of the 7 billion people on this planet is welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome to be a good soil and to come to Jesus. Everybody, there's no person that Jesus ever wanted to leave behind or not save. Everybody's welcome. Everybody's supposed to come in. Everybody's supposed to understand. Everybody's supposed to have their eyes open because it's a good against the evil, the devil. And everyone can be free from the power of of darkness. So then he replied to them, to you, to the believer, to you, whoever wants it, whoever wants it, make sure you always remember that, whoever wants it, to you it has been given to know the secrets and the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. So I know I've had several times where people would write me a letter, and I, I'm a, I'm, I love that. <clears throat> I love being challenged with the word of God. I love it when people question. I love it more when they receive what I have to say in, from the Word of God. But when they start arguing, there's one guy who just giving me attitude, arguing and arguing. And I finally said, you know, this scripture here, I said, you know what? You can't see what I see from the Word of God because you choose not to be born again yet. You choose not to. Oh, that answer bothered him even more because he wanted to, as a sinner, see what we as believers can see. And they can't. The eyes of our understanding are enlightened by the Holy Spirit. And uh, again, how much light? How much do you want? How fast do you want it? That's what the Ephesians prayers are all about. That the eyes of our understanding be enlightened. And so Jesus is very clear about that. For whatever, ha 
Whoever has spiritual knowledge or the eyes being enlightened, this is the 12th verse of chapter 13 in Matthew, to him will more be given and he will be furnished richly. So there you go. To him who has, so the guy that has some spiritual knowledge will obviously know how he got it and thereby will also um, um, have more spiritual knowledge and it's just a chain, it's a, it's a snowball reaction where it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger as it rolls downhill. So, so that's a very important part of that. So it's not that Jesus is making it hard like dangling a carrot. No, it's for every believer. Every believer can have the spiritual eyes open, the light turned on. For whosoever has spiritual knowledge to him will be more given and he will be furnished richly so that he will have abundance. Say abundance. There's nothing wrong with having abundance. And you know what? The people get mad. The people that don't have abundance get mad at the abundant people because the abundant people bug them because they think they can do have abundance without having uh, their eyes or their heart open and it doesn't work. And so get the horse before the cart. Get spiritual knowledge or the eyes of your understanding be enlightened and God will enlighten anybody and you will be furnished richly so that you will have abundance. But from him who has not, even what he has will be taken away. Now understand what's happening here. For him that has not, he's actually, he, ha he, has, he has missed the step of receiving the eyes open. So what happens, he's actually going backwards and backwards and backwards. And I know tons of Christians that are going backwards and backwards. Tons of them that, you know, went to church once as a child. And then to a degree, their eyes were open. And all of a sudden, the cares of this world or the lust of other things or going to college or, or just being a smart aleck or whatever gets them away from the Word of God. They start regressing. And also what they had, they start going to college and I've heard so many painful reports from parents where it's like, our child no longer believes in God. He no longer believes it the way we believe it. And they were hot one day in Sunday school or in the children's church. And I'll tell you what, you look at some of the rock stars, some of them grew up in children's church. What happened? Exactly that, exactly that. And all of a sudden they become mouthpieces for evil. They become people that one day were committed to morals and character. All of a sudden, they let it all go. What happened? You, you, you want to say, how in the world is that possible that they who were once so hot have now regressed? How is that pop possible? Right here. That you're either furnished richly by having your spiritual knowledge and it, it grows. And I've shared with you before, I have had the opportunity to uh, to get under the Word of God. I remember Brother Kenneth Copeland, he taught for seven hours straight. Now, now the flesh can hardly take that. The flesh can, the, I know people I have to laugh because they had a wooden chair to sit on and they were just squirming in their chairs. I sat back and you know what you asked my, my wife, I sat back and I enjoyed seven solid hours of preaching. And he could have gone on and on and on and on and on and on and so forth. And so uh, I'm not saying you have to do that, but I'm saying that spiritual hunger, you know when it's on and you know when it's not. But when it's on, you gain. When it's not, you lose. There is no exceptions. There is no, you know, going around the board and collecting $200 here. You are going backwards on the board. You're hitting all of the enemy's uh, traps on that boardwalk, if we can compare it to Monopoly. And uh, you're not getting ahead. And sooner or later, I've seen them. I've seen them. I grieve. I can name them to you. Some of the Hollywood, you know, stars. And all of a sudden, they're, they're out there. They're promoting everything that's worldly. Everything that is against Jesus Christ. They're promoting it. And it's always because when you are uh, not getting into spiritual knowledge or not having the eyes open, it is taken away. Not by God. But that's just the principle. It gets taken away. And so we don't want to go there. And uh, then it, it goes on to say here, this is the reason that I speak to them in parables, because having the power, 
having the power to see they do not see, and having the power to hear they do not hear, they nor do they grasp or understand. Wow. And you know what's so sad about that? A person could actually be standing before in front of the gates of hell and not sense in their spirit, man, that they're in trouble. That they are, are uh, as the Bible says, you can gain the whole world and lose your own soul. What, what was the good of that? You know, and that, that's where I'm sometimes amazed that some people that, that are just so happy to live in sin or parade their immorality in, in a pride parade or whatever, and then all of a sudden they're like, somebody has a sign that, you know, uh, you know, trying to point them to the right way and they're laughing at it and making mockery. How can that be? How can that be other than this here that the eyes of their understanding is darkened? In them indeed is a process. Watch this here. Woo! Verse 14 of chapter 13, Matthew. In them indeed is the process of fulfillment of the prophet Isaiah, which says, you shall indeed hear and hear, but never grasp and understand. Something is slipping. And you shall indeed look and look, but never see the per or proceed. And I don't want to be in that state. And I know you don't want to be in that state either. You want to have the eyes of the understanding being like, now again, I want to share with you um, more on the subject. If you are uh, uh, wanting to call us at 250-862-3044, we would love to share with you and chat with you about the Word of God, pray with you, uh, make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life today. If you've never ever done that, Romans 10, 9 and 10, and uh, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Hallelujah. Have an amazing rest of the day.